it's time to think about questions that ask you to describe a practical. These questions are very common and they're usually worth from five to sometimes eight marks. In all of these, you can follow a set list. It's quite a long list, um, but once you get the hang of it, it will, should become quite natural. First of all, uh, if they say you may wish to draw a diagram, definitely draw a diagram. They'll have left space for it. If there's a circuit involved in the practical, definitely draw a circuit diagram. Then say what you will measure and what you will measure it with. It's amazing how many students forget to say, I will measure the height with a ruler or I will measure the time taken with a stopwatch. Then what will you do? You're very brief here. What formulae will you use? Uh, so if you're saying you need to calculate the weight, you have to write W equals MG. What graph you will plot? Always, always say that you will plot a graph. Sometimes you won't need to for the marks, but mostly you will. So it's always safer to say what graph you'll plot. And how you will use the gradient or the y-intercept to find the unknown quantity. Then, if there is any relevant safety information, add it. There's not always relevant safety for a physics practical, but for example, if you're using a laser, you must give the safety information for a laser, something like that. And finally, sometimes they want you to say how you will make sure your data is accurate and precise. It's, it's difficult to know when they want you to do this, so you might want to just tack it on the end just in case. But generally speaking, if it's only five marks, they're probably not going to need you to do this. If it's eight or nine marks, it, almost certainly they'll have asked you to do this. OK, so an example might be, say, dropping something, uh, dropping a tennis ball uh, to calculate G, to calculate a value for G. Uh, probably wouldn't need a diagram, no circuit diagram. OK, so I will measure the height that, of drop of a ball using a ruler and I will measure the time of drop using a stopwatch. I will drop the ball from a range of heights. I will repeat each height three times. Uh, I don't need any formula here. Uh, then what graph are we going to draw? So, there we go. The relevant formula here is S equals UT plus a half AT squared. But U is zero and the acceleration is G. So that gives us this formula. That means we're going to plot this graph. The gradient will be a half g. And then you must write gradient times 2 equals g. Don't leave it as gradient equals this. Rearrange for the thing you're interested in. OK, safety. Um, if I was really making sure I'm getting all the marks, I might say, um, uh, have a have a mat, a soft mat, so that the ball doesn't bounce, something like that. But it's not really that important for this one. And how will I make sure my data is accurate and precise? Uh, you can go to town on this one. Um, avoiding parallax when taking your height measurements. Making sure your ruler or tape measure is vertical. Make sure the height you drop it from is large enough, so the time is long enough to give you a reasonable chance of reacting. Those are probably the main ones. OK, so I've chopped the space out that was left for you to draw the circuit diagram here. Um, but for only five marks, have a go at this one. OK, so this is an old question. So its mark scheme is slightly different to how your questions will be marked. But it would be something like this. For one to two marks, you would have a correct circuit diagram. And you would have said that um, you would measure the current using the ammeter and the potential difference using the voltmeter. To get into the three to four bracket, you also need to say that you would vary the resistance of the variable resistor and take a set of readings um, for uh, V and I. And you might need to, in that bracket for four marks, you might need to say um, that you will um, put the numbers in the formula or something like that. And then for five to six marks, you would also need to say that you will plot the potential difference against the current and you expect a straight line 
the y-intercept will be the EMF and the gradient will be minus R. And so the internal resistance is minus the gradient. So it's a little bit um, unclear exactly how they would put the marks there with this being an old question. But if you stick to the plan, um, you will definitely get four marks.